Hello everybody, Torx here. Today I am going to show you how to install a power supply into your desktop computer. Whether it's a new build or if you're replacing a broken power supply or you just want to upgrade your power supply, either way this tutorial should help you. So let's begin. Now first off, before I get the actual physical installation stuff out of the way, the first thing you should know is, um, in case you're completely new to this, the wattage. Um, it, it, it varies from system to system. It really, really depends. You can't just say you need this many watts for your computer. And there's more to it. It's not just wattage. There's a lot more to it, but I'm not going to go too into detail. But basically, the more wattage, the more you can power up. Um, but that's not really everything. There's very cheap power supplies that say they're 15 bucks, and then it says 500 watts or something. But, yeah, you know, let's, let's say generally 500 watts, you're probably going to want to spend at least 40 bucks or so. Maybe 38, 35, whatever. But if it seems too good to be true, like it's really cheap and then it has so many wattage, so much watts, I don't know how to word that, it has too much wattage, it looks like it's probably too good to be true. It's idle usage is not very good. So you want to just look up good brands, you know, Corsair, Thermal Takes, okay. Um, it's not the absolute best, but it does the job. And um, yeah, so basically the more wattage you have, you should also look at how many cables it has. I'll show you right when I open this up. It's actually a new power supply I'm putting on my computer. Um, you know, like for a graphics card, generally speaking, no matter what graphics card it is, you want at least maybe like a 400 watt power supply, maybe 350 It's all, if it's a really low profile one, but still I would go 400, 450. And you know, if it requires a PCIe cable, which I'll show you, then you're going to want something maybe a little bit higher, but you know, look it, into, look it up for yourself, you know, because each system is completely different. Maybe what I'm saying won't matter at all, but basically, yes, more wattage, more power, and for those of you who don't know at all, sometimes this question arises. It's a little rare, but it still happens. If uh, there's there's no possible chance you can over wattage your computer, okay? You can't have too many watts, so don't be afraid of getting something, you know, too powerful or anything. It's not going to happen. If anything, more power is better. All right, so here is the power supply, and ah, let's get that fresh new hardware scent. Um, but yeah, basically. Most of the cables with most power supplies are going to be like these fat, rounded cables. I specifically got this one out to have flat cables, which is more rare, but they're very handy for, you know, making room and cable management and stuff on your computer. But once I get this twisty tie untied, we're going to get familiar with the different kinds of cables in case you don't know. And of course, at the beginning of the video, I'll annotate the spot, you know, where the physical installation begins in the video. So in case you already knew all this stuff, you don't have to watch me blabber on about stuff you already knew. So anyway, these red ones are here. And only with this power supply, the red, not every single one will. They'll be all different kinds of colors, mostly all black. But this right here that you see, this is a PCIe, a six pin PCIe connector for something that would plug into a PCIe port in your motherboard. And a lot of uh, graphics cards require this cable. Some will require an 8 pin. This one has a detachable piece right here. So most have 6 pins. Some will have an 8 pin, and that's when you use this right here. So some are, they're called breakaway connectors. So it's an 8 pin to 6 pin converter type thing. This one has two of them. So it actually has two 8 pins, and you know, they're both convertible to 6 pin. So, you know, some cards will take like one 8 pin and then one 6 pin. So this is perfect for that. Um, that's for your graphics card. Of course, not all graphics cards need it, but some will. So, this is your most important cable, the 24-pin connector. Basically, it's just the main motherboard connector you plug that into. These are SATA connectors. These They're flat-looking. They're called SATA connectors. They're for hard drives and uh, optical drives, mostly. And then, right here, we have Molex, 4-pin Molex connectors. Not to be... Uh, why do I keep blanking? <laughs> not to be confused with 4-pin processor connectors, but these plug in... Yeah, just call them Molex. I just like to call them Molex connectors. Um, they plug into fans, or they're per called peripheral cables. Sometimes they plug into fans and older style hard drives, like IDE hard drives and older style optical drives used to use them as well. Now they use SATA, but all fans still tend to use these uh, peripheral connectors. This is a floppy drive connector. I'm not sure why this brand new, you know, new age power supply is using a floppy drive connector because nobody makes floppy drives anymore, but I have a feeling it's... It can be used for other devices, I think. I don't know, but there it is. <laughs> Might as well just throw it on there. And then right here we have a, it looks just like the PCIe connector, the 8-pin eight eight PCIe, but actually it is a um, processor connector, an 8-pin processor connector. Most of them are 4-pin, which this one can break away. If I can figure out how to do it, there's usually like a little 
piece right there. Crap, this is going to take a while. I'll break it away off, off camera, but basically you can detach and reattach this. Most power supplies will have two separate cables. This one has a breakaway connector, so you can convert it from a 4-pin to an 8-pin if you want, but that's the processor connector. So that's all of your cables. All right, so I have my desktop opened up here. Um, if you have a cable management holes in your computer, um, I would also open up the back panel. So either way, just make sure both back both panels of your computer are opened up and the power supply spot is ready. Um, this one uses a bottom mounted power supply. Some desktops will use a top mounted one. Um, for a bottom mounted, you would want to face your power supply upside down. Okay, because the fan is what's cooling it down. Okay, it's sucking this way. So the fan's sucking air right this way where I'm pointing and it's blowing it out the vent right here. And the vent's going to go out of the computer and it's sucking air. You might be wondering where it's getting its air from. Well, there's a vent right there. And on a rug it won't do so good, but it's going to be on hardwood floor when I have this computer set up. And there's pegs that lift the desk off the ground a little bit. So it'll be sucking in cool air from the ground. And the lower your uh, ground is, not the lower the ground is, uh, the lower everything is, the cooler the air will be. So it's pretty much sucking air from the coolest possible spot. It's bringing it into itself and then it's just pushing it out the back of the case as hot air and not disturbing anything else. So it has its own independent cooling system when you put it on the bottom. Bottom mounting is pretty much better than top mounting overall. Better balance and better cooling. However, if you have top mounting, I would face it, always face it upside down either way if it's top mounted or bottom mounted because if you have it right side up when it's top mounted, where the, there's no spot for it to get any air. So you'd have it top mounted. It still uh, cools itself down. It's just not quite as nice because it sucks in all the hot air from the computer into itself and it's not quite as good cooling, but it still works. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal, but anyway. You would you just want to mount it in. So there's not much to it. Just sort of get in there. Just make sure you don't break anything or anything like that. And again, if you're replacing a power supply, if you had an old one, you just want to unplug all the cables and then you unscrew it out, take it out, and then you do it in reverse with your new power supply. Put it in the spot. And now we're going to want to screw it in. All right, the kind of screws you want to use. Um, of course, you want to use the ones that your power supply came with. But for some reason, if you don't have any screws. Basically, big threaded screws are how it works. Okay, this is a big threaded screw. There's also little threaded screws, which you can pretty much tell the difference. They're little threaded. Big threaded screws are for power supplies, so it's probably going to be tricky because I can't tripods in my way, but basically you just want to you know, line up the screws with the holes there. Just look through it. Okay, this is going to be tough. I knew it. But... It's simple once you get the first couple screws in. All right, I didn't. I generally don't like to screw them in all the way at first. I don't know if my arm was in the way of the camera, but hopefully it won't be for this one right here. And as you screw it in, it kind of brings the power supply towards you a little bit. But to help, you're going to want to grab the power supply and just sort of, you know, bring it towards you as you're screwing it in. And finally, the last one. And I didn't tighten them all the way just yet because usually the first couple of screw, or maybe just the first screw you put in, you want to leave it a little bit loose just in case you have to make small adjustments. Um, okay, that's in. I'm going to finish this one up. All right, that's done. Basically, we're just mounting it into place so it doesn't rattle or anything. It's, it's not even 100% necessary to use all four screws. Two screws will probably work fine, but, you know, whatever. And now they're all screwed in, so the power supply is now mounted in place. All right, so this part right here is the 24-pin connector located on your motherboard. Um, it's going to be in different places depending on what motherboard you have. And yes, by the way, I only have 264 RAM in there right now. Two of these RAM models aren't working at the moment. I'm going to see if I can fix them, but just throw that out there. But basically, it's a 24-pin connector. I already have it you know, looped through the cable management from the back and then coming out this part right here. Not every desktop has it, but some do, and it makes it a little bit nicer. So basically, you just locate where the notch is. You can see a little plastic lip right there. My fat fingers in the way right there. And then here is the notch of the power connector. And basically, you just plug it in that way. This is difficult to do on with, with holding a camera, but I can use the tripod, it doesn't get low enough. Now it's in, I just want to click it in. All right, now it's in. Just press down on it, make sure it's in. Usually they don't even make that distinct of a clicking noise. I wish they did, but this one doesn't really, but it's in, you can tell. So. That's the 24 pin connector. Um, next is the 4 pin connector is all the way up there. You can see it. And the cable I have actually right there, but there's no way to be able to, to record it. But 
basically you do the same exact thing as you did with that. You locate the notch, but it's just a little four pin, and just plug it in. And then of course if you have an eight pin, you use the eight pin. Here's the six pin port of the graphics card. It has one six pin port. This is a GTS 450 as you can see right there. And I have the PCIe connector ready you know, through the cable management just for you. And same thing, you just see the notch right there and you look where the notch is, generally they'll be plugged upside down because the graphics card is upside down. I'm going to see if I can do this. It's, it's Again, it's difficult to do on camera, but it's still pretty simple. All you're doing is just slipping it in. Sometimes it's tricky. Okay, got it. There we go. And that one distinctly clicked in, so now the graphics card's all ready to go. Most of the other stuff I'm going to have to plug in is going to be through the back because I have my hard drives facing you know, that direction, so I'll have to be plugging them through the the back panel, um, you know, mostly because I don't like them spacing on the front because then all the wires get in the way and then sometimes it can be difficult to close it, so. Alright, so here we have the back side of the computer and as you can see here's where the cable's coming through the cable management. It's kind of a rat's nest right now. I'm going to show you what you're going to do with all these cables, but when it's all done it'll be a little bit nicer and neater, so. Anyway, here we have our SATA connectors. These ones, these have a nice little setup right here. Here's the back of our hard drives and as you can see, they SATA uh, cables to the motherboard are all plugged in. This is an IDE cable. They're annoying, but there's another hard drive down there. So uh, these three SATA cables are going to plug them in. So here goes in the first one. Basically, you can just see a little. Uh... Actually, that the hard drive is kind of weird. You can't see the notch on it, but this is really difficult to do when you're holding a camera. Hang on. Okay, but all you do is basically just sorry, went out of focus there. But basically, you're you're just pushing it in. There's no not. Come on, focus, focus. Focus camera. Okay, there you go. There's no notch or anything. You're basically just pushing it in until you hear it, you know, just going all the way. It's pretty simple. This one you can see the notch. I don't know why you can't see the notch on that one, but this one you can. And you just kind of line it up. You can see it has a distinct, like an L shape almost. So that's what we're going to be plugging in right here. Sorry, it's difficult to see, but it's pretty straightforward. I guess my hard drives wobble a little bit because I use toolless management, toolless design. It doesn't need to be super fixed, stiff, you know, for your hard drives to work. But And then finally, I don't, I don't think I need to show this on camera because it's going to be way too difficult and annoying for both of us, but eh, maybe I can. This is a solid state drive. It's the tiny little hard drive that my operating system is installed on. Make sure. Oh, moves upside down. You know what? I'm going to do this the opposite way. I'm going to use this cable first and that cable and then that cable. So I'm just basically going to switch them around, but that's basically how you plug them in. Alright, so now they're all plugged in once again. Um, and now I'm going to plug in the IDE hard drive. Most people won't have this because it's older. They don't really make these anymore, I don't think, but it's this fat duct tape looking cable. And then you can see it uses a Molex connector, which is also used for fans. Um, and then older style optical drives will also use this connector, so I don't have one of those, but in case you have that, basically it's the same exact thing. You just push it, whoop, crap, toolless design. <laughs> it, I have to click it in better, but yeah, I'm going to turn the camera off so I can use my other hand to hold the hard drive. Basically, you're just holding your hard drive and pushing it in. Alright, now, now that we have the hard drives plugged in, the motherboard cables plugged in, the graphics card plugged in, um, let's plug in the fans. Now. These little cables, you see how there's like a mini cable plugged into this like converter right here? This is called a 3-pin connector which can plug into the motherboard as system fans. I have one of my fans plugged into the motherboard, but my motherboard only has one 3-pin slot. Um, generally fans will come all the time with these converters, the 3-pin to 4-pin Molex connector. So basically it allows you to plug it into a Molex connector into your power supply. Now if you have like a billion fans with only like two Molex connectors, you might be thinking, how am I going to plug them all in? Well. They work like Christmas lights. See, there's a male and a female side. You can plug them into each other. One Molex connector can go up to roughly, I think, eight fans. And by fans, I mean I'm talking 120 millimeter fans, okay? If they're smaller fans, then it's probably about the same, if not less power than that. But if you have a really big fan, like maybe 140 millimeters or 250 millimeters, something like that, I would not plug it into anymore. It might have some kind of problem, may not work or something. So, but if they're 120 millimeter fans, you know, maybe you could plug maybe like five to one and then try to split it up among cables. I wouldn't plug all onto one cable just in case, just as a precaution. But basically, again, it's going to be difficult to do one with one hand, but we have our Molex connector here. I'm going to use this one right here, actually. These two cables right here are the front panel fans. Okay, they're both right here. And these 
this cable, and where's the other one? This one. These are both the roof fans. The rear fan is plugged into the motherboard. This is the bottom fan. This is the hard drive disk fan. And then the two side panel fans are right here. I'm going to plug them in the front. I have one of the Molex connectors sticking out the front through the cable management right there. Um, yeah, so basically you're just going to plug it in. It's very, very simple. All you do is just push it in. So you want to take the male side because the power connectors from your computer are all uh, female. So basically you're just going to... I can't I gotta do, Usually you should do this with two hands. That's what she said. But Oh, got it, I think. Boom. Okay, so that's plugged in. This That fan will now power on. So now we can just use the other fan right here take the male side and see now there's a female side right here that's basically the power from the Molex connector so we can now plug that into that so this Molex connector will be powering up both fans maybe oh, it's gonna be tough it's tough to do you should have two hands but I'll just plug them all in and then I'll show you when I'm done alright so here I have I think five fans all plugged into this one Molex connector as you can see right here then my other Molex connector, I just plugged in these two fans. I, I like not to put all of them onto one. If you have a bunch of Molex connectors, you might as well just divide it up as much as you can. It's not that big of a deal, but it's just a precaution I take. So pretty much everything to the back is now plugged in now. I'm going to have to neat and tidy this up. But in the front, we still have to plug in the optical drive. Um, I still have to plug in the 4-pin motherboard connector myself. I'm not going to record that. There's no way it will be able to be helpful. But I still have to plug in these two fans in the front. Alright, so these two front fans are now plugged into that one Molex connector right here. Um, front panel fans, rather. And finally, for the camera anyway, we have the cable for the optical drive. I hate how the power cable is over on this side. But actually, it doesn't really matter which side it's on, because either way, it will be difficult. But it's the same exact thing as the hard drive. You're just lining it up and plugging it in. And again, I can't really do this because I'm holding the camera. But you get the idea, right? Okay, now I'm going to have to turn the camera off, but yeah. Alright, now every single cable is now plugged in. I have the side panel, um, the back side panel anyway, closed. And look how neat and tidy it looks. Yes, it's a rat's nest in the back, but the panel's closed so you can't even see anything. So if you get a full view of this, all the power supply cables are plugged in. It looks like there's nothing there. So cable management's really, really nice to have. Very clean looking. And it's not only cosmetic, but it does help a little bit for air to flow in as well. So... Now I'm going to turn it on and see if it works. Alright, let's give this a go. Yay, it works. Alright, that's how you install a power supply.